Here's your word for the day from Calvary in Lake Havasu. Visit us on the web at calvaryaz.com. Hello, I'm Pastor Sean. I work with the students here at Calvary, and I have the honor of bringing you the word for the day. Today and tomorrow, I want to introduce you to the Bible hero from Judges 10 and 11. His name's Jephthah. His story teaches a lot of things. Things like reaffirming that God uses the outcasts and rejects to accomplish his will, to things like being a leader in God's kingdom requires sacrifice, faith, and follow through. Like all the judges, before Jephthah took, in, took on leading the Israelites, the Israelite people found themselves once again doing evil in the eyes of the Lord, all because they worshiped foreign idols and betrayed God. So God withheld his safety and protection from them, and they were ravaged by surrounding countries in, in war. In their distress, the people of Israel turned back to God by doing these three things. One, they confessed their sins to God. Two, they removed all foreign idols from among them. And three, they served the Lord. Because they did this, the Bible says God could bear their misery no longer. Check this out. Although God withheld his safety and blessing from them, he never left them. His desire is for his people to always turn back to him. He is patient and perfect in waiting and his rebuke. And he's not sitting in the background while his people suffer. He's with them through and through as their true king, bearing their, ministry, their misery. And because they turn back to him, God will save them all the same. So after this turning back to God, the Israelites find themselves going to war with the Ammonites. And once again, they're in search for somebody to lead them out of trouble. Now enters our hero, Jephthah. The Bible says he was a mighty warrior, but he had a checkered past. His father was a man named Gilead, but his mother was a prostitute. This caused Jephthah to be an outcast among his people and his family. His half-brothers born to Gilead's actual wife ended up running him out of the area because they didn't want to share their inheritance with the son of a prostitute. So he was an outcast. And because of that, he hung around scoundrels and misfits most of his life. This isn't someone you'd think you'd vote as your president. But luckily, our God doesn't care about any social standing. God doesn't care about any social stigmas or past things that try to follow us around and lie about who we are. You see, God gave Jephthah a chance and opportunity to step up and out of his past and into the life that God had created for him. When Jephthah was confronted by the elders of Israel to not only come back and fight for them against the Ammonites, but also to become their leader. Of course, he was a little skeptical at first, but he said yes. The Bible says this in Judges 11, verse 11. So Jephthah went out with the elders of Gilead, and the people made him head and commander over them. And he repeated all his words before the Lord in Mizpah. See, this signified the turning point in his life, going from outcast to accepted leader. And this shows something so beautiful and yet so common in God's kingdom that God can redeem, use, and bless anybody he chooses, no matter the past, no matter the hurt, no matter what people think of you. Because our God's strength is made evident through the weak. His wisdom is made evident through the simple and his success is brought through the faithful, not the perfect. And so from redemption, Jephthah starts leading the Israelites. Now, I don't always think we're supposed to put ourselves in every Bible story, but I do think God's ability to redeem the unredeemable for a purpose bigger than themselves is important for everyone to understand. In fact, it's a direct reflection of the gospel itself. Jesus did this same thing for all who believe in him as their savior. And as I grow older and I meet more people and different leaders, I realize that the most God-fearing Christians and Christian leaders I know aren't the smartest. They aren't the toughest, they aren't the most perfect, but rather they're people who humbly and faithfully cling to God's redeeming power in their lives and in their ministries. They're people who know their past has no say on their future and their weakness has no say on God's power in their life. They know that God is faithful to call us up and out of whatever situation they're in. So even in their lowest moments, even in their mess ups, they know God is their hope and the author of their lives. The truth is, God doesn't rewrite our stories. He catches us up to what our story was always meant to be. So do you trust God to be your redeemer? 
Do you live your life trusting that God has always had plans for you? It's okay to be skeptical like Jephthah was, but say yes to the mission. Trust him that the life he has for you is bigger than your past. No matter the family lineage, the social standing, who you've hurt or how you've been hurt, none of it matters like you think it does. Because God is our savior, our author of life, our redeemer. So lean in him today, Calvary. I love you a lot. And tomorrow we'll continue our introduction to Jephthah. But for today, I hope you see God's redeeming work in your life. He's with you in every moment, patient for us to turn back to him and trust him as our God and savior. And I hope you trust Jesus enough to step up to the mission and purpose he has always had for you. Have a great day. Love you a lot.